to the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals hearing November 27, 2001. Um, we are missing one board member, uh, Catherine Miller, and we are still light our full seven board uh, complement after Mr. Fristashi's resignation um, of two months ago. Um, first item on our agenda tonight is uh, reflected as approval of minutes of October 23, 2001. However, we actually still have uh, minutes unapproved from September 25. So I'd like to go back before we even take up the October 23 minutes and take a look at the September 25 minutes. The September 25 minutes were given to us, you may recall, at the October 23 meeting, so none of us had an opportunity to review those uh, before the meeting. Does anyone have comments or suggestions for changes on the September 25, 2001 minutes? I have just a couple of very small suggested changes. Does anybody else have any? No. Um, on page one, line 37 of the September 25 minutes, it refers to um, a motion made by Mr. Keneally to accept the minutes of the August 28 meeting. And line 37 says the motion carried six in favor, zero opposed, uh, one abstained. Um, we only had six board members at that time, so we couldn't have had six in favor with one abstention. I think it should be five in favor, zero opposed. Um, with one abstention, with uh, Catherine Miller uh, abstaining. And she was abstaining because the August 28 minutes included her own presentation to the board for her request for a variance. So if we could have line 37 at the September 25 minutes change to say the motion carried five in favor, zero opposed, uh, one abstain. Um, then on page six of the September 25 minutes, on line 25, uh, it says Ms. Lowell asked what lots were involved. Um, I think that that should be Ms. Miller rather than Ms. Lowell. I don't know who the Ms. Who, who Lowell is, who might be referred to there. Um, on page seven, line two, at the end of line two, it refers to Marion and Tom and Mary Peterson. Um, suggests we delete the reference to and Mary, so it just refers to Marion and Tom Peterson. And the, then last on page eight, uh, line 10, the uh, first full sentence that starts on line 10 says, a copy of a letter dated September 19, um, I believe before the word A, uh, we should insert the words reference was made to. So the sentence will read, reference was made to a copy of a letter dated September 19 and addressed to Maureen O'Mara, the Cape Elizabeth Town Planner from uh, Durward Parkinson. And on line 11 where it refers to, it, it now refers to Durwood Parkinson. His name is actually Durward, D-U-R-W-A-R-D. Those are my only suggestions for changes, all pretty minor. With those changes, can I have a motion from someone? I make a motion that we accept the, the minutes from the August 28th meeting. 
Is it 28th? Um, uh, no, this was actually September 25th. September 25th. This September 25th. Uh, motion by Mr. LaPlante. Um, second. Mr. Keneally. Um, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The minutes are approved by a vote of five in favor, uh, zero opposed. Um, which now takes us to the October 23 minutes. And we are favored by Ms. Miller joining us. Uh, comments, suggestions for changes on the October 23 minutes? I have a couple of small suggestions for changes. Um, page one, line 17, the word complement. Seems that that word is misspelled. 70% uh, of the time. It should be an L-E-M-E-N-T. Um, page 2, line 42. I believe it's Mr. Backer, not Brother Backer. We have um, with us on the board. And page 4, paragraph beginning on line 27. I would like a sentence added so the effect would be the, it would be the um, I guess a, a last sentence in that paragraph would say that Mr. Keneally rebutted Mr. Prestashi by pointing out that the open space would not exceed what is allowed. What page was that? Page four. Um, and once again, Mr. Keneally, the proposed language, Mr. Keneally rebutted Mr. Frustasi. By pointing out that the open space would not exceed what is allowed. And I recall that discussion. Other comments? Um, I have just a few, um, again, fairly small. Uh, page one, line 31. Um, if we go back up to line 29, um, to start to read that sentence. It says, Mr. Backer noted that Mr. Haddow, the attorney representing Mr. Fristacci, and Mr. Crawford, the attorney representing the South Portland neighborhood opposition, it had both had audience at the previous meeting. Um, I don't think that quite makes sense. I think what we want to say there on line 31, um, well, continuing from line 30, it will say, had both presented evidence at the previous meeting. And it was now time for, instead of the position of, it was now time for Mr. Haddow to open with his rebuttal presentation. Barbara, did you get that? Um, and then on line 37 of page one, it says, they reviewed markers. It should simply be he reviewed markers. Um, on page two, um, line 24, um, Mr. Parkinson's name, again, the first, his first name is D-U-R-W-A-R. And those are my only comments. Any others? With those suggested changes from Mr. Keneally and from me, could we have a motion from someone for approval? 
Uh, Mr. Keneally, uh, a second? So second. Mr. Tranfaglia? Uh, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion uh, is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Which takes us on to next item on the agenda, which is old business, and that is to hear the request of Julie Hoare, 175 Fowler Road, tax map U19, lot nine, for a left side property line variance of eight feet from the required 30 feet to construct a garage. Ms. Hoare. Good evening, members of the board. Um, Julie Haar, I'm representing myself uh, for this um, sideline variant to construct the garage. Um, it was postponed from last month. I've been a member of the community for just three years, but I have other family members who are also long-standing Cape Elizabeth residents. And in fact, I bought this house from my brother. And in um, talking with neighbors, we found that um, it was the old Spencer farm. There was an old cape that was built in 1870, and, uh, and what we found is that there was an old barn on the property on that same side line that um, I'm proposing, um, which may suggest that another structure is in keeping with the original property. Um, in talking with neighbors also, I spoke with several neighbors uh, to see what their thoughts were in my building a garage. and. Um, Nobody objected. Um, they were all very helpful in um, my acquiring measurements to give you examples of similar um, dwellings in the neighborhood, in the general, in the immediate vicinity. Um, I've also um, put forth pictures um, showing um, practical difficulty, I hope, um, to your satisfaction in regards to um, the old structure and the land as it has been and uh, what would be required to move the garage to the uh, required uh, location without the variance. Um, I'm open for any questions. Thank you. Okay. Well, why don't you stay up at the podium for any questions that board members might have. Thank you. Questions from the board? Dr. Chapman. Where is your septic system located in the tank in relation to the house? The septic system is behind the house, uh, behind where there is a porch. Uh, I don't know the exact measurement, um, but it would be farther off uh, to the right side of the garage. It's actually on the other side of the patio, the existing patio. So it's not in close proximity to the construction, proposed correct. construction. Not the septic tank, correct. Uh, the other question on page two of your addendum, page three, I believe, of your addendum, you showed a number of side yard setbacks comparison. Uh, eight, of, eight of the ten, I believe, that you showed were quite some distance from your property. Why did you choose those at, at, uh, at that distance from your property and not your immediate neighbors? Because I went down Fowler Road, I thought that the same road that I live on would be appropriate, and I knocked on several doors, and I basically went by who was available. I went on a few different occasions to speak with people and to ask if we could get measurements. Um, so I, I went along with um, the same road that I live on. But there were a number of houses to your your left, which I believe is the west or southwest. Mm -hmm. Where the left side variance that I'm seeking, that in that direction. Uh, did, did, 
Did you make any measurements of those areas? I only made measurements of what I listed here, and um, some of them were farther down on the road on the left, and then some were on the right. Um, I chose homes that have, have garages, and um, again, I chose, you know, for people who are home. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. questions what size garage are you planning on building a two bay garage a approximately 24 by 26 was that noted in here anywhere it may not be I don't think I put the actual measurements I have an estimate for a garage uh, that has that size on it in front of me I don't believe that's in the packet. And have you had a drawing of any kind prepared of what you propose to build? Yes, I have one. Could I bring it up? Uh, you do have one? Like this. Could we see that, please? The um, 177th Fowler, the, the house that's closest to the drive, the garage? Yes. It's not the far side. I'm sorry, say that again. I, I assume you have two houses on one on each side of you. Correct. The 177 is the house that's going to be closest to the new garage? Yes, correct. And it, you said they're going to be 53 feet away. Is that because they're about 30 feet from the property line? Right, they're, right. Okay, correct. and then you're 20, 20 something. 22 approximately, and okay. this is all measurements by me and the neighbors. How old is the driveway? I believe it's four years old. It, the actual paving, rather. Uh, there's always been a driveway there, but it was dark and mud, and my brother had it paved four years ago, approximately. What is in between the garage and the house? A patio, um, and then a stone wall, a brick walk, um, and then the exit to the basement is right on that corner that goes out onto the patio. It looks like from the survey, the land uh, cuts in as you go into the property. Mm -hmm. from going from the front of the house to the back of the house, it's not an even straight line, it cuts in. If you were to move your, your drive, the garage up a little bit, would that then take into account the 30 feet? No, we've, no, it's still we've, we've checked that. In fact, I am moving it in onto the driveway itself, um, just so it will be back over a hill that is there. There are also several hills right nearby. Um, well, a few. There's one behind and then one to the right that goes down onto the patio. The houses next door to you, do they, what kind of garage do they have? Uh, the one immediately to the left has a two, two bay garage. Okay. One single door. What about some of the other houses? Uh, the one on the right does not have a garage. Any other? Um, the ones I've listed have garages. There are also ones uh, immediately beside going down the road. Um, I'm a little concerned, though, because the ones you listed are so far away from your house. We're supposed to be taking into consideration what the houses, the cl 10 closest houses are. And not only are the, the houses you've listed a, 
considerable distance. It doesn't tell us what they're like, I mean, as far as whether they're a double garage, single garage, double garage. That was my misunderstanding. I thought that being on the same road, on Fowler Road, would be most appropriate. But, um, and some of the others who I stopped by to see weren't home, and I didn't take it upon myself to take measurements without people home. I thought these were to be examples for um, comparison's sake. The Gordons and the Campbells, what street is that on? These are all on Fowler Road. Where's the Campbells? Campbells are to my right, the going right. down the road, on the same side of the road, but to the um, right of my property. Um, You need to see the um, actual lot on the map. Mm -hmm. I have the map. I just can't figure out what part of the street of the Fowler that is. Um, some of these properties were down and to the left, and this is one that was on the right, right side of my property. Um, Um, I share Ms. Miller's concern about the, um, the neighboring properties that you've given us information about. One of the things that we have to find in order to approve your request for a variance is that um, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty for you as defined by the ordinance. And the way practical difficulty is, at least in part defined, is that enforcement of the ordinance would cause you to suffer a significant economic injury. And significant economic injury is defined in turn by um, saying that you will be placed at a disadvantage in your neighborhood um, by uh, you being prevented from having um, a structure, or in this case, an accessory structure, comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. So the only way we can determine that you have, in fact, suffered significant economic injury is to know what the surrounding property owners mm -hmm. have. Um, that is comparable to yours. Um, well, it's funny you mention that because I've always considered a follow of Fowler Road my, my neighborhood because I'm not in an actual neighborhood and I have considered all of Fowler Road. I've always, when I go up and down the road, think, you know, this is my neighborhood. The road as a whole, um, again, you know, if I was in a different setup of a neighborhood, then maybe the homes would be closer. Um, if I could have found more people home closer, you know, maybe this would have reflected differently, but there are other people with garages who I didn't list here. I listed 10, um, again, depending on who was home on my visits out. Uh, and I thought most importantly was um, the garage immediately next door, who was the neighbor who would be most directly affected by this. And I enclosed a letter um, from them stating that they don't have a problem with this and of all the neighbors, you know, who I met and spoke with, they, nobody had a problem. Again, I, I consider all of Fowler Road my neighborhood. Well, I'm sure you do, um, and even more than your road, your neighborhood. But unfortunately, the ordinance tells us we need to look at neighborhood as defined specifically as no less than the 10 nearest properties. And Mr. Smith? And to elaborate that, if you want to do the whole neighborhood, you can expand that 10. 
but you've got to include all the properties. You can't select properties out of that. Excuse me, Bruce, does, does this information get passed on to applicants about the 10? Yes. Because there's also 4A here, which sp is the specifically the, the 10 nearest neighbors we have to. I, it's the same routine for every applicant. OK, because we have to know about the 10 nearest neighbors to be able to pass some of those. You've got to do at least the 10 nearest. You can do 15 or 20 if you'd like. Right, you've got to be the nearest. That's correct. Yeah. 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 That's correct. Uh, another part beyond what Mr. Backer mentioned is 4A, which we have to pass on whether the change would produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. And the only criterion that we have to apply for that, and we do have to apply it, is whether the structure is larger or closer to the road or property lines than the average of the, ten, of the nearest 10 principal structures. Or in the case of a variance request for an accessory structure, the nearest 10 accessory structures. So it's the actual the absolute nearest structures that we have to be able to compare with. And so the applicant is expected to bring data in on those nearest structures. Yeah, but when I did speak with Bruce, um, he said that just go up and down Fowler Road, that, um, you know, just, I didn't know that it had to be immediately, you know, all 10 of the closest uh, structures. If I can just kind of switch gears a little bit, um, I'm looking at photograph number two. And in, in that photograph, you are showing the angle of the driveway, coming up the driveway, and you've marked between the planter and the shovel. And that's, I think, what would be the garage if you had to move it over? Correct. OK. The thing I'm concerned of, this picture has kind of enlightened me in that moving it over, I realize that you've got to move a wall and stuff. Your, but your primary concern seems to be the feasibility of not being able to move the driveway. But it appears that all you'd have to really do is fill in a small section to kind of move it over. So I'm, I'm not convinced that this, it's not feasible just to slightly move the, an angle of the driveway to add a little portion of the driveway. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, that is on photo two. I showed the front aspect, but on photo three is the rear aspect of that same um, area, and that um, is the stone wall that's been right. there for hundreds of years. The tree's grown out of it to show, and that's also a hill. Um, so to move this driveway over not only offsets the entire driveway, um, I would have to demolish the stone wall. I would have to fill where there is a hill going down. And I believe it's more than just filling in a little, you know, eight foot section of this head of this driveway. It, it would be more significant than that. Have you looked into what that would cost? No, I haven't been able to have someone come over and, and give the two estimates. But people have come to look. They just haven't given me an estimate in writing. Um, and, and we discussed the same issues about how I'd need fill and it would demolish and, and just the practical aesthetic um, of, of the driveway, looking at where it is and, and how it would look if I had to move it over eight feet. Um, my sense, Ms. Hor, is that the board's going to have difficulty making a decision at this point without information about the 10 nearest properties. Um, the application, um, do you by chance have with you a copy of the application that you've submitted Pardon to the me? board? Do you have a copy of the application that you've submitted to the board? Yes. Um, if you look at page three of your application, the page that actually has your signature at the bottom. Yes. Um, you'll see about a third of the way down, you see the definition of significant economic injury. Um, that's really what we're looking at there. 
And then in bold below that, you'll see it says, please provide documentation, i.e. photos, site map, et cetera, that shows your proposed structure, structure addition uh, to be comparable in size, location, and number with existing structures on at least 10 of the properties in the immediate neighborhood. Uh, but the definition of significant economic injury, you'll see right above that, says, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. And it may very well be that in looking at the 10 nearest property owners, that what you're asking for is in fact comparable to what is in the surrounding area. And you can go beyond 10, but we at least need to know what the closest 10 are. Um, so the, the ones a little bit farther down the road may be fine, and as you say, um, can be considered part of your immediate neighborhood, but we need to know what the 10 closest ones are. So and with that, that information, we might very well be able to find that you would suffer a significant econ economic injury, in other words, a practical difficulty. But I'm not, from what we have in front of us now, I don't see that we have the information that we'd need to be able to make that determination. Mm -hmm. um, not every single neighbor immediately next to me has um, a garage. There are condos across the street, so I can block out that. Um, and, 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 and it doesn't mean that every one of the ten has to have a garage. What does it mean? It, it means that we're looking at the ten nearest property owners to see what will be comparable in the immediate neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that all ten of the surrounding ones have to have a garage. That's why I chose uh, um, properties with a garage. I thought that was a comparison. Right. I have, no, I have no doubt that if you go down the street far enough, it won't be hard to find 10 properties with garages, but we need to know what is immediately surrounding you. OK, again, I thought it was the immediate neighborhood, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. Well, it is the immediate neighborhood. But it's defined beyond that to say, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. So you're right, it is in the immediate neighborhood, but there's an additional clause that requires that we have more than just the houses that are farther down the street. I think, can I agree up talk among ourselves? Or I, I have a, I'm more concerned about the feasible alternative. Um, I think this, this is different than a lot of properties we've looked at because there's two acres of land here. And most of the properties in which we're considering a variance, it's limited land and there's really no other place that they can put the structure. Here, she, she really has a lot of options as far as putting it behind the house, back further, to the, uh, moving it a little bit to the right. Uh, I just am not convinced that just the driveway isn't I don't think that just moving the driveway, it, it's, it is a pro, you have to do it, but I, looking at the feasible alternative definition, and there's no other place in the lot taking into consideration the physical constraints of the property or no other location on the structure that the proposed construction could go without the need for the variance or without causing the owner to create other compliance problems. And I just, I'm not convinced that there's no other place in this lot which the structure could go without the need for variance. Well, I'm bound by the fact that it's an 1870 Cape where that's placed, regardless of the land behind it. Um, I, I don't, it can't go behind because of the septic tank. Well, how, you said the septic tank's more behind the house. Behind the house. And behind the garage, it's a leach field. I don't believe I can build it on that. How far is the leach field to the it garage? It would be over the hill immediately behind that garage, that proposed garage. Is that on anything that you've seen? Um, no, I didn't uh, draw it on, but it is immediately over the hill right down behind the garage. Uh, it's a raised bed. You can visually see it on the property. And then behind that, uh, there are wetlands way down behind. Um, so I don't believe I can push it back behind. Um, 
and I can't say that I would drive over the leach field to get to a garage set down. No, I wouldn't expect you to move to the leach field if that's the case, but I haven't seen anything to prove that's the case. Um, okay, it is It is right on the property. It's a raised bed uh, right behind. I, I'm sorry, I didn't delineate that on the map. Well, I get the sense that what Ms. Miller is raising is that what your application says that there's no feasible alternative because of the rock walls, the brick sidewalk, um, the stone patio, and the gardens. That's what you're trying to avoid tearing up by moving the garage over, right? Correct. That would be moving um, it over. And Ms. Miller is questioning whether or not that, in fact, creates no feasible alternative. That's an issue for the board as a whole to decide whether that is or isn't it. Um, a situation that presents you with no feasible alternative. Um, but that's something the board will have to vote on. Um, I'm, I'd like to suggest that you consider uh, coming back in, though, with additional information about the 10 closest property owners. I could do that. Um, otherwise, if we're forced to uh, make a determination tonight, I think we'd have to find that there isn't enough evidence for us to find that there is a practical difficulty because we don't know what the 10 nearest properties have. Mr. Chair, would it behoove the applicant to um, have the board at least look at the question of feasible alternatives because if you can't get by that, it makes no difference about the other the 10 nearest. If that's still an issue, I, I think that ought to be settled. And then she can either move on or go away because she can't get it because of that standard. Well, I mean, it's too bad um, to have her do the homework, come back, and then you deny on something that could be settled tonight. Well, what you're asking us to do, I suppose, is to vote on that question tonight, whether there is or there isn't an, a feasible alternative, to vote on one element um, of the overall practical difficulty and I'm not sure that's appropriate to do, um, to vote on simply one element. I don't know if he's asking for a formal vote, but I think we can discuss it among ourselves and let her know which way we're going. Well, um, because if there's I, other I, I guess, I, I, guess I, I don't know if I'm asking for a formal vote or not. I'm just saying that if that, in, that standard def, it, it indeed is not met, then really the rest of it is, is for naught. There's no point in it. So whether you take a vote or not, I don't know. But Certainly, if that issue can be resolved tonight, um, as easy as it can be with the other information, because the other information is a separate standard, then I would think the board would want to move in that line. I mean, if I was the applicant, I'd want to know that. I wouldn't want to go out and turn the wheels if indeed I'm coming back and there's something that is going to hit me anyways. I agree. All right, well, we can do that. I mean, we can get the sense from the board as to what their thoughts are on the. <coughs> Uh, no feasible alternative um, component to the standard. So just so we understand, what you're trying to avoid doing by asking for the 20, by asking for the variance to have your garage 22 feet from the property line as opposed to 30 feet from the property line, is you're trying to avoid having to tear up your stone wall, your brick patio, uh, and your gardens. Yes, correct that, and the aesthetics of, of changing the pattern of the driveway and the location of that as well. Is the brick patio in the front of the house, or can you tell it's me? It's a stone picture? patio. It would be over the hill of the proposed garage to the right of the driveway. Is that where the umbrella is? Yes, that's yes. But if you just moved it over eight more feet where the shovel is, that's certain, that, does that really implicate the patio? It does. If you look at the next photo, uh, I don't know that it shows the actual. If you look at photo three, it goes from the edge of the driveway down a hill, and then you start to see uh, there's a ladder. You can see the beginning of the stone work and that's the edge of the patio. But the, 
the drive the garage would end right there, wouldn't it? Based on the arrow. And in about right there, right, but and then back to the other issue of uh, de demolishing the old wall, and and resetting that driveway, which it would just look funny the way the driveway is set. It just aesthetically, it just wouldn't look. I I don't know what the word is normal <laughs> for a driveway. I was also left with the impression that the that at the edge of the driveway where the proposed garage is being placed, it also fell off as well. Is it the side and the rear falls off. So, so you, it's all in a hill. Were you planning on filling in to, to lift very the garage to the driveway? Very slightly because I was moving the garage forward to prevent needing more fill mm -hmm. um, or a foundation. And that's the same with the side. It might not look like much, but to put a foundation, and I didn't get an actual estimate, but I, I think with a foundation, concrete, uh, fill, and the demolition it would be a significant uh, economically for me. Um, and that's why I came forth with this proposal, because it makes the most sense to me. But that's what I'm trying to prove to you. This is uh, you were able to approve a setback to 25 feet. Is that correct? No, this is a, this is a conforming lot, which is 30 feet. Okay. So that's the difference on this one. So the 30 is held because of that fact. Okay. That's correct. The that sideline that this. Uh, the garage is closest to is, according to your uh, mortgage survey, is 372 feet. And you determined in your application that, that uh, it would approach 22 feet setback. How did you determine that? Was that I mean, it, in the sense that your survey shows that there are two iron pipe found uh, on the upper left and lower left corner of the property with 372 feet between the two. How did you determine the 22 feet? Uh, I went by the front edge, the corner post toward the front, which was the closest peg, and measured from the side with the neighbor. You know, it, it's an approximation, which I wrote approximately. I, I measured it myself with a tape measure. Bruce, do you make any or, or how do you determine when there when you do have such a long sideline that that it that it does conform to the 22 feet if that's approved and, and if it's a concise defined sideline it, it, I would assume that it's a lot easier than 372 feet sideline. Is that ever difficult for you to verify that setback in the final construction? It's not, it's not difficult at all because I don't verify it. The only way I'd verify it if I, if I required a full-blown survey and had a line, line strong and I'd measure off the line because otherwise I've taken it from arbitrary points. The applicant is made aware that it's their responsibility to, to submit an accurate document depicting the actual measurement to the, to the uh, structure. The only time I have a problem with that and put a stop on it, on it is if there's information from a neighbor that indeed it's not where it should be, or it's obvious when I come to the site that it isn't meeting the setbacks. Other than that, I do not com confirm setbacks for any building. I think I see Mr. Chapman's point because the line moves to the northeast, and if you've only measured from the front end, the rear end of the garage would actually be uh, further into the setback. But there again, without the board requiring us a full-blown sub, uh, a full-blown uh, survey, um, they've already, you know, we've established that they have to accept a, a, uh, at least a Class D, and 
you know, I don't know how we can, you know, I, I think we only can tell the applicant that, that if they're asking for a variance of eight feet, that they're going to have to be um, at least 22 feet off the property line in this particular case. I'm not sure how we go forward with that. We, we usually get a more uh, specific survey plot than this that shows and the, actual, the actual measurement from a proposed foundation of a proposed structure to the property line. This is this is less information than we usually receive as far as this is the minimum that you you've decided you will receive. But you question. cannot require any more than that. We took this to the board a couple of years ago to the council and asked if okay. if, if we could do a, you know require applicants to, to do surveys and right. their answer was said no we're not going to require that. Well, I still don't. I, there has to be some some method that satisfies both us and I would hope you. Well, I, I think that, this is a this is a measurements that we're talking about actually exist. And I think this is a cold conversation upon itself that we had two years ago, and we certainly can revisit that. But um, well, we usually don't have to revisit it because we usually have a better drawing than this one. But because I push people into what they call a sketch plan, right? There's no requirement to do so. Right. But, okay, now given, given that we have this, and if this is going to be all that we do have, I, I have to be more satisfied than I am right now about the actual knowledge of, I mean, we just have a hand-drawn dotted line for the proposed structure here. Um, and I, I certainly am not convinced that there's any serious documentation of that being 22 feet from the nearest point of the property line. So, yeah, let me, this might dovetail on that. Is the drawing you have to scale so that we can measure it, um, so that we can make sure? Not the proposed garage. I dotted that in myself. Um, the drawing, the rest of the drawing is. Um, no, I'm concerned about the garage though because that's no, where we're getting. No, no, I dotted that in. You know, I um, consulted with Bruce beforehand, and, and he said a mortgage loan inspection map would be appropriate. Um, I just put proposed garage and approximate measurements. Um, well, it can't it can't be approximate. I mean, it's, you you got to you're asking for a variance of eight feet, so it has to be mm -hmm. 22 feet when you actually place it on the property. Well, I wrote that um, because I measured it, and and if you measured it that day, you know, I mean, if you or anyone here measures it, is that I mean. Now, what happens if, irregardless if, it, if it's to scale or not, she's asking for a variance of, of eight feet. Right. right. And, and, and that's where her responsibility lies. If she gets a variance to be 22 feet off that property, whether the, whether the drawing depicts that or not. That um, was, that's what I was leading to with my question earlier, since the west, uh, west property line does not appear to be parallel to the proposed garage. Can we assume that uh, the, the final product, the closest point, will be no closer than 22 feet? And that's what I was getting at. That was one of the issues that I was getting at. Uh, at, at as was mentioned, it appears that the left rear corner of the garage might be closer to the property line than the front rear corner of the garage. It, you know, I, I think that is something that we would also like satisfied too, that, that no point in the garage is closer than 22 feet. I mean, Bruce, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't, I'm going to respond to what you just said. I don't think there's any, makes any sense for us to just approve a number without having some confidence that the number is based in reality. That's fine, Jack. I, I could take a scale right now in three minutes, could have it drawn on, this, on the plan. Or she could do it she has at 22 feet. I know, right. but I could do that. But that doesn't mean that the, that doesn't mean that it's going to. It's not going to assure that that building is going to be 22 feet off the line because she's drawn it on there to escape. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, but the issue is still, she's asking for a variance of eight feet. Right. And she, and, and it's still her responsibility to place it at 22 feet. Irregardless. Because since this, you don't consider it your responsibility to monitor that it's done, then I think that we have to. It's my responsibility to make sure that the, the applicant knows their responsibility and submit an accurate site plan. Now, how they get there, whether it's a, a like I tell them, a napkin drawing or a full blown survey, it makes no difference. I don't it's think still that, their responsibility. 
Okay, well, I don't think we're there. Well, well what are the consequences, um, Bruce, of someone, I mean, let's say we grant an eight-foot variance and the garage is actually built um, um, a half a foot too close to the property line. They have, they have, they're told from day one when they come to the office that if, if it is not accurate, if they're not comfortable with the paper napkin, if they are hugging a property line or they're asking for a variance, then they, they should go to a, a, a more expert, a, a different level of expertise. If they've got a cushion of 15 feet, for instance, and, they, and so they've got something that they don't have to be as accurate with. And, and I, I clearly state, tell them that if, if something happens, whether they need a variance or not, and it's closer, then, then, then the reality is they might have to rip that section of that nonconformance off the face of the earth. And they're aware of that. And, the, and that will be as a result of a director from your office? That's correct. I mean, short of doing, and, and I'd love to see surveys for everything, but that's not going to happen. Well, I understand Bruce's point. He's saying we could be given a drawing that shows it exactly 22 feet from the closest point of the property line. But how is that really of any help to us? Well, Bruce also says he's not going to measure it, right? I've well, I didn't, I didn't back yet. say that. I heard that. I heard you say that early in this discussion that you... I, only, I, I will measure a setback if I think there's a problem or if a neighbor comes forth with evidence that there is a problem. Otherwise, I'd be measuring to points that, unless it's just been surveyed, I'd be measuring to points that could be arbitrary. I don't know that there's, those stakes are even where they're supposed to be on the face of the earth. So I'm, I, I would be making an arbitrary decision. So you wouldn't have any way of confirming whether this is in fact That's built correct. 22 feet from the property. Without a survey and having a surveyor right. coming out there and actually do the line and place the stakes at the garage. That's the only way that can be done. But if someone applies for an eight foot, eight foot variance and they really go nine feet into the setback and, and you don't really monitor it to that level of detail unless there's some reason for you to do it. Right. Um, and a year from now, three years from now, she goes to sell the property and a new buyer has a survey done and this buyer says, oops, I issue violation, have a violation here. Now everyone's in trouble. But I issue permits on a daily basis on uh, uh, using the same scenario, Jack. And not everyone. There's no other problem. way to do it without requiring every applicant to have a survey and have a surveyor stake the building. Uh -huh. And that is not, does not go po overpopular with the citizens of a town. And when you get to town council level or selectman level, they're going to say no, and w which they just did to, uh, to the Board of Appeals three years ago or two years ago when we brought this same issue up. This is not new territory here. So the owner takes a risk um, upon sale of the property or on an attempt to mortgage the property that if there's a violation discovered that could either be denied financing or a new owner, new potential buyer could be denied financing and the opportunity to purchase. We just had a, a garage that had to be ripped down because of that. All right. So the responsibility is on you. Correct. Ms. Ord. That's what I understand. I understand, Jack, what you're saying, that it should have been drawn to scale. And, and, and I agree that it should be drawn to scale and put on here. But right. that she could do that in five minutes and it's not going to change anything. Well, I'm going to ask that if, if you're going to go back and provide additional information on the nearest neighbors, that you also make an enlarged copy of this drawing and draw the proposed structure to scale, both scale to its size and also its distance from the property line as shown in this drawing. That's not an unreasonable request. Uh, you can do that yourself. You don't have to. <coughs> you know, I'd prefer that you engage the service as a professional, but if you want to do it yourself, do it. But do it to scale. But before we even get to that issue, let's go back to the issue of um, feasible alternative and provide the applicant with a sense of whether or not that is an issue. And if, if I may dovetail into that conversation, um, <clears throat> I agree with everything you said, Jack, but I also think more information is needed um, with the sketch in reference to the septic system or leach fail. Um, okay. Mainly because <clears throat> I'm lacking some information looking at the mortgage loan inspection chart. And, 
uh, I guess this is probably a good way to look at it. Not knowing anything outside of this, I said, well, you can still preserve the stone wall. You can still maintain your driveway and just extend the driveway and, and rotate the garage structure behind the stone patio. <clears throat> However, then you offer to the record that that goes over a leach fill, which I really couldn't appreciate on the photos. Um, I guess it's, it's that type of information that's sort of missing that makes it, you know, there, there are several basic issues that have to be addressed in order to give the, the ordinance is quite clear, a variance is sort of an exception. And there has to be, you know, we have to meet certain criteria. And right now, we're, everyone's wrestling with, can we make that decision? Because we really don't, you know, they're very specific about the local neighborhood. And you, you have some, no one's objected to it, which is the other, which is great. But we don't have data from the local residents. And looking at alternative feasibility, um, I would like to see a little bit more information on the, the, the sketching. Because my looking at this sketch, is the driveway to scale to the house? No, I drew yeah. that in yeah. as well because yeah. that's the it's, those okay. are the proposed and yeah. the driveway was new since this was um, drawn up. Because from the photos, I said, well, it's going to be an awful small. I was trying to visualize the whole, and I guess my my point is, we really need some. We need a little bit more data because uh, I think forced to. To make these decisions without it, I don't. You know, I would have trouble coming to a favorable. And I, I, I go along with what Michael just said. I, I should have added it. I appreciate Michael bringing it up. That he mentioned the leach field is behind with where the garage proposed to go. Um, I would like some that shown on a drawing because that certainly comes into the feasibility question whether that can be moved or not, whether the garage can go someplace else. If there's a leach field there, obviously, you know. It's preferable to avoid putting it over a leach field, having to move the leach field. So uh, if you come back with an improved drawing, please try your best to show where the leach field is. Mm -hmm. And the septic tank, too, for that matter, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I guess my feeling is that even the feasibility question begs a little more information to go forward. I concur as well. <clears throat> well, it doesn't sound like we're going to get very far tonight in giving you a decision, at least a favorable one. Uh, but I also don't hear that people are inclined to say that you have no feasible alternative until they hear more. Um, in other words, the question that I'm hearing from people is, is there a feasible alternative available to you simply by moving the garage back and a little bit more toward the house, behind the house, which would simply require extending the driveway a little bit without having to move any of your rock wall, garden, sidewalk, et cetera. That's what I hear being raised as a possible alternative for you that might be very easy. But we don't know whether it's easy or not, because we don't know where the septic tank and the leach field is. The other feasible alternative, which is obvious, but we haven't said it, is a one-car garage. That would solve the problem. Um, it wouldn't disrupt anything. It still would fit on the foundation. Many houses on the street have a one-car garage. But again, we can't compare that because we don't have the closest neighborhood, mm -hmm. neighboring houses to compare to. Um, but that, I mean, that's a very real possibility. There's a lot of houses, I think, in Cape that couldn't build a two-car garage because of the property line. So that is an alternative. So what, be you, the favorite. what you're saying is that when she does a study, she she should look she, at the it, other. It, it could be that there's no, there's not enough two-car garages. That there might might be enough one-car garages. Right. You might be able to approve a one car but not yeah, I think that's that's a factor that we need to consider. What are what are the other houses? Are they two car garage? Are they one car garage? How close well, is actually, that? Well actually you wouldn't have to approve it then because there wouldn't be a need for variance. You're right. <laughs> right. So I think that's something that's that true, a one car garage wouldn't require a variance. Well, Ms. Hoare, the sense I'm getting from the board is that this is a matter that should be tabled to give you an opportunity to come back with 
um, the additional information that's been requested. Um, again, more specifically, um, a drawing uh, to scale that shows, shows the proposed garage 22 feet from the property line at its closest point um, that shows the location of the leach field, um, the septic tank, um, and that gives us additional information about the closer properties. Uh, properties, the 10 closest properties. You can go beyond 10 of the closest, but we do need the 10 closest. So may we consider the ones I've already submitted as 10 beyond that? The ones you've submitted are fine, but it's just not enough. Right, now the ones- They're, they're fine for us to consider those, but we also need to consider the 10 closest. Correct, now the 10 well, closest are- the 10 closest and then those that are way down the low road, you have to consider those between the 10 nearest and the ones down the road. You have to, you can't consider that and then skip a bunch and then go 10 up there. Right. And I didn't right. mean to suggest that, yeah. that we would. But we do need more. We need to know what is closer to you than the ones that you've given us. Mm -hmm. And again, you said that they don't all have to have garages. But if they don't, I, I'm a little. Well, we need to know that. I see. Whether they do or they don't, we should know that. If they don't, what you should be con considering is how close they are to the site setbacks. If they don't have a garage, what is their house setback? Because um, what we're looking at is two things. We're looking at what, what type of garage they have in comparison to your house. How are they alike in your, in similar to your house? And then the second thing is the spatial issue as to how close they are to the side setbacks, regardless of whether it's a garage or a house. We want to see how much they're encroaching on the side setbacks so that we're comparing. You're asking for so much space in between your house and the property line. What are other houses set between the property lines? Okay, that makes so, sense. And to be fair and to give you even more information, when I drove by the house and drove up and down the street a couple of times, not, not only to see where the houses were that you had listed, but also to get a sense of what is around you, my initial impression was that what you were asking for was entirely consistent with what is in your neighborhood, meaning not only down the street with the one, houses that you've shown, but the ones even closer to you. That was my sense, that what you were asking for was entirely consistent with what is around you. But I didn't go look closely enough to actually count out the 10 closest and sort of make a mental note of what the 10 closest were because I was hoping that we might see that. Um, but that was, my, that was sort of my drive-by impression in looking at your house and the surrounding ones but the board needs that additional information in order for us to make the finding in your favor, if that is in fact what we're inclined to do. Point of, point of clarification, you, Catherine, you said something about um, you could compare the placement of the successory garage in relation to houses, because I thought it was kind of a comparison no, apples that, to apples. No, I'm looking to see how close, how close the other houses are to the property, their property lines. And if, if they don't have a garage, we'll go with their house. To have yeah, I, I need guidance on that because I, that, I, when I read significant economic injury, I talk, it talks about prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those other loan auto owners in the immediate neighborhood. So I figured, I've always had, was on the impression that the accessory structure is you have garage. to compare other accessory structures to make sure there's at least the same situation, for the majority. Um, so I, I need some clarification. Yeah, I get, let me see. Uh, I, I read it that way. I have a couple of. No, I think you're right. I'm sorry. Very simple questions, if I may. The, your proposed garage is a one-story garage. Is that correct? One and a half be in keeping with the house, which is also one and a half. It would have a little a loft. One and a half. It's, it's to keep the same roof line, the same pitch as the uh, house. The reason why I asked was the uh, plan that you circulated today showed some stairs at the left rear corner. That's to go up to the loft? Just for loft storage, correct. And that's a intended storage loft? Of, Correct. Of, sorry. Okay. Uh, do you 
plan on putting any type of workshop or uh, in, in this or uh, access from a, a pedestrian type door into the rear of the garage at all? Or is this purely for uh, automobile garage? Automobile and storage. And um, storage. Okay. Correct. And you're do you plan any windows on, on that side line, that side of the property that's closest to the property line? No. Thank you. And, and have you heard of uh, any of your neighbors have they expressed any opposition or concern about this at all? None whatsoever with the ones who I spoke with and most importantly the neighbors immediately to the left. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's a good point, Jay, though. Um, there's going to be an upstairs, but it really should be an elevation. Um, so you'll either approve a one-story or a two-story. or You'll either approve a one-story or a two-story or a one-and-a-half-story. Um, so that's important to I, I know that information. That, I didn't see that mentioned in the application. I assumed it was a one-story. Um, that's why I didn't question that. And I, is it, do you typically get... Bruce, uh, uh, a profile, elevation profile, even a hand-drawn profile of these? I have, I, I require a, a floor plan and, a, and at least an elevation, yes, a cross-section. Is, is it then appropriate that we request yes. that? Yes, I would think so. Okay. Well, now, what do we do with that, or what do you do with that if you have um, a, an elevation profile? Uh, well, I, I generally, if it needs a variance, I generally will advertise for, for through the variance process a, a, a single, a one story, or a garage if it's just one story, or if there's another story on there, a one and a half story or a two story, and it's carried through with the approval based on that um, advertisement. And, and was this advertised as one story? Or was that even mentioned in the advertisement? Just as to construct a garage. Just as garage. Just to construct a garage, which is fine for the advertisement. It's just that the plans, we should have some plans. Um, well, I guess I didn't, I didn't question it because I, I, I don't know why I made the assumption that it was a one-story garage. But is our approval, our approval is routinely for a one-story or two-story specifically? That we will specify that in the order? If it's more than one story, it's, it's usually specified somewhere in the application, yes. And the plans would reflect that, and, and the discussion really usually leads you around or through that. Or the discussion by the board usually leads the applicant or the approval based on the discussion. But we can be, I can make sure we're more specific. And that, we but then what do you do with the follow-up to confirm that what was um, approved was actually built? Bill permits based on, on uh, the plans that were submitted. And the plans that submitted have to, usable floor area has to match what the Board of Appeals has granted. So if it's a two story, then, then uh, that's what they get. If it's a one story, that's all, that's all they get for a permit. They don't get a two story. And what is that? what's a one and a half story? Is there a separate permit for that? Well, one and Will a half. Will you actually issue a permit for a one and a half story as opposed to a one story? Well, I would issue a permit based on whatever elevation there is. But one, one 10, 12 pitch with knee walls or 10, 12 pitch with unusable space underneath where it becomes unusable is considered a one and a half. One and three quarters is a dormer on one side or the other. <coughs> and a full story is either two dormers or, or two full stories. One three quarter would be a dorm on one side. So, Jerry, normally we have a little bit more. We have some plans that go with it. So, so during the, the, the construction phase, a dormer could not be added to increase the floor space, or at a later time, a dormer could not also be added. It without couldn't be added if, if if that dormer was on the side that the variance was required, requested, and 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 the plans clearly showed that there was only a one story on that side. Can I have a point of information also? Uh, Bruce, it's my recollection, I think the elevation, my thinking, and it might be wrong, um, 
was that elevation came into, was, was a major factor in non-conforming lots because we were talking about a volume change and the, the, the percentage of the lot that's being used for either living space or storage space. And we seem to be sensitive to the, the, the height on, a, on the variance was very important. Oh, that's a setback reduction. So, but on a conforming lot, isn't it more an aesthetic uh, that it should match the, the elevation shouldn't go higher than the existing structure for talking about an accessory? For, for something that's already existing within a setback and they, they want to add right. usable square footage, by meaning increase the, the non-conformance, the board can approve that square footage increase as long as the height that's within the setback is not increased. But for variances, that's, that isn't the case. Thank you. So we're adding one more thing to your list. Um, an elevation drawing that will show the garage from the side and from the front. Which well, it depends on which way the roof is. You look onto the roof from the, the house or you looking onto the gable end? Correct. You look onto the gable end? Mm-hmm. The house is um, considered a one and a half story, I believe, and the garage, maybe I misstated, it isn't going to be as big as the house. So if it's a one story with a loft, is that, did you say that it's considered a one and a half story if there's loft storage? Well, if you want a floor on the second floor, you've got to show them on a plan, whether, no matter what we call it. So okay. what, what I would suggest is you show the elevation with the pitch and show the floor so that everybody know, understands what you're asking for. The front elevation would be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce, the, the plans that were circulated show the 12 5 roof. That's a fairly flat roof. Is that 512 pitch? Yeah, I think it described at 12 5. So is this a floor or just some, some plywood up there for storage? Just storage. It might so not, it's even not be a floor. It's, it's just, just, no, just partial. Oh. If it's just an attic with a pull down stairwell or, or a scuttle hole, then it really isn't anything you have to worry about. It's not anything that can ever be used for anything more than throwing up some stuff up there. Correct, that's all my intent was on that. But so that's why I thought it was a one story, I guess. The, I didn't uh, see that. I haven't seen that tonight. The plan seemed to show a permanent stairway. I well, had the option of putting a drop and, and the builder, and that is just an estimate he suggested. Uh, oftentimes people just put one in the corner. It's easier to get, say, furniture, for instance, for storage up there than trying to wobble up a rickety staircase. Well, this is 12-12 pitch. It's a trust roof, 12-12. They're going to probably truss it so that there's a space in the middle for, to floor over. It is with trusses. They need, they need, to, show, they need, they need to show that if, it, if indeed any of that floored over spaces less than 30 feet. Well, hopefully the folks who are planning on building the garage for you can provide you with the elevation drawing. They can do that pretty easy. They have to stand it. Well, I want her to have this back for me. I do need that back if I may. Yes, let Ms. Roar have that back. Thanks. Bruce, does this mean we're going to meet Christmas night? Excuse me? <laughs> Does this mean we're meeting Christmas night? Yeah. Well, I don't believe um, you'll want to go get started after in the January with this garage, correct? No, um, this will probably push it off into the spring. Right, because, so you don't, um, don't, you, you're locked into a, a six month substantial completion, so you're better off, in my estimation, to wait until at least January or even towards the spring to give you that time frame. Uh, so I think it would you'd be better off not to go in December, because then you're locked into six month completion. I'm trying to I'm trying to get around. Good to She'll have six months to complete six months to complete it? A year to complete, I'm sorry. Six months to Yeah, it's a year to complete, isn't it? Yeah, it's a year. Yeah. Um, but even so, if she's not gonna get started. I mean if you want to get started this winter, um, you know, we can take this back up in December if we can find a date to do that. Otherwise, if we don't have a December meeting, you'd be left until January. And if you would like to try and get started uh, this winter, we will see if we can find a date in December. 
we could. A concern of mine was the cement to put the slab down. Um, I thought it had to be put in before a serious frost, and that was, you know, why I proposed this when I did. Um, not realizing it up to go to this degree. It's pretty elaborate, all the information um, that I still need to obtain. Um, I may just wait until spring. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of information I still need to obtain, and, and the person who is going to um, put the cement in said, not to pollute it with too much calcium or it could crack or be weak. So, you know, um, I'd have to research that more too. Yeah. Because if this is approved in January or February, which are the coldest months in Maine, then I, I've waited this long, you know, I'd rather wait and make sure it's done right. Well, that's fine. And that's certainly your choice to make and we'll take it up whenever you want to bring the additional information back to us. So tabled indefinitely. Um, I would suggest based on what um, Ms. Hoare is telling us is that we table it indefinitely until you submit the additional information asking us to take it back up again. Um, and if you decide after mulling it over the next couple days that you want to try and resubmit the information and get it back to us for a December meeting, we will try and accommodate that. But if you decide you want to wait until spring, that's fine too. Okay, I'll let Bruce know. But, but don't be scared off by us from tonight. I mean, put the information together and come back. Okay, I'll let Bruce know is, uh, within a few days, um, whether it's December or if I feel I, I need more time than that. Is okay, well, that being said, um, can we have a motion to right? table the application uh, pending the applicant's submission of the additional information that we've requested tonight. Uh, motion, Ms. Miller. Second. Second, Mr. Keneally. Um, discussion on the motion to table. Um, all those in favor of tabling? Opposed? Um, it's tabled indefinitely by a vote of six in favor. Uh, zero opposed. So we will table it um, until you uh, provide Mr. Smith with, with the additional information, um, at which time uh, we'll take it back up. One point that I think the board should stress, clarification of your point, Catherine, um, because I'm not sure if she heard our conversation. Okay. Do you want to clarify? Um, well, when we talked about comparing to houses instead of garages, you really need to compare to, like, to garages. That's yeah, rather than, I, I misspoke. I forgot the accessory structure rule. Um, when you're comparing, look at the, whether they have one car garage, two garage, or no garage. And in measuring the side setbacks, when they have a garage, measure the garage to the side. We're not as concerned about the houses, because that's not an accessory problem. Okay. Any questions for us? No, I'm all set. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, next item on the agenda is to discuss the December meeting. The 25th is, is, is the uh, meeting. December 25 is the fourth Tuesday in December. Anybody going to be here December 25? Not well, I set the time aside already for the meeting. So. Seems to me that there's something going on that day. I can't think what it might be, but it, the date has a familiar ring to it. I can already smell the cooking. <clears throat> well, I'll, I will have eaten by meeting time, so I'll be here. Well, we're obviously not meeting on Christmas Day. Um, if, in fact, somebody submits information for a December meeting, what about the week before? Are there any nights that we can hear it? Tuesday nights, uh, final board. Okay, what about any other night that week? I'd have to check the schedule. I, I don't know, it changes. Um, 
Is everybody in town the week before mm -hmm. the Christmas week? Well, if you can, if we have somebody who makes a submission and wants a hearing, and if you can find a night for us the week before, we'll do it. Is that well? It, is that enough, or do we need to be more specific? Well, we see that's that's the, that's the problem. The, the scenario with Christmas and New Year's is that you really don't want to put it off to the next week because you got the same problem. You, you bring in a week forward, that means that, that everybody loses a week because their paperwork has been two weeks prior, so which means that feasibly they have to have the paperwork in by next Tuesday. Can we just make so, a decision we're not meeting in December? Well, I don't think we can if there's somebody who has a submission and they want us to hear it. Well, my only point is that it would shorten up the, the time frame, so if anybody comes in after, after the time frame, if you set that meeting for, let's say, Monday night, Prior, prior week on that Monday night, um, then then we'll have to hear it. But well, we it up, but that's, that's okay. I don't believe we're going to have anybody. I haven't okay. I haven't talked to anybody about any any variances at all. Well, we can all accommodate a shortened time frame. I think so. Mm -hmm. so it would be the 17th. Monday. Can't be, it can't be the 18th because of final work. Yeah, 17th would be that Monday. Right. Or Thursday. the Wednesday or Thursday. Monday works for me because I that's why I have to stay until 5 Monday anyway. So. Okay. Well, Monday. <laughs> works great. Perfect, perfect. Monday works fine with me as well. All right, that's fine. Okay, so Monday the 17th, right? Any other communications? A motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. Miller, second, Mr. LaPlante. All those in favor? We are adjourned. Bruce, what's the schedule for having another member added to 